Hi folks, today we'll be talking about stakeholder mapping. I'm Aaron Aldemus, Program Director with the Consortium for Public Education. What is a stakeholder map? A stakeholder map is a method for identifying, organizing, and understanding the role of individuals and groups within a system or community. A stakeholder map visually illustrates the key relationships between people. Visualizing who is involved in a system or community helps determine the individuals who should be involved when addressing a given challenge. Otherwise, we may make assumptions, ignore valuable input, and ultimately try to solve a problem with incomplete or biased information. As always, if you're wondering where this method fits within the design cycle, stakeholder mapping is most often used during the empathize and define phases. So, stakeholders are defined as those individuals who have an interest or concern in a product, experience, system, or idea. When naming stakeholders, it is essential to focus on people and not institutions or organizations. Always remember, a stakeholder map should help determine people whom you should engage. So let's talk process. Step one, working with your team, define the system or community you would like to map. Your system might be really small, like a classroom, or fairly large, like a neighborhood, or you may be looking at a really complex system, such as an entire city. Step two, each team member creates a list of potential stakeholders in the system. Step three, compare your stakeholder list with your teammates to determine which stakeholders will be included on your map. Step four, represent each unique stakeholder on a sticky note. Each agreed upon stakeholder should get their own sticky note with a stakeholder title. If possible, it's helpful to assign an image to each stakeholder. This helps to emphasize the humanity of each stakeholder, that these sticky notes represent real people with real thoughts and opinions. Of course, the drawings on your stakeholder map don't have to be fancy. Stick figures and hand drawings are perfectly fine. This is an example of avatars drawn by high school students. If you were mapping a school system, stakeholder titles might include principal, history teacher, ninth grader, etc. How specific you choose to be in naming stakeholders will depend on the size of the system that will be mapped. Smaller systems may allow for more specificity, and larger systems may require some generality. Step five, post all stakeholder sticky notes in one space so that your teammates can see all of them at one time, like so. Step six, choose a facilitator. Step seven, as facilitator, ask team members to begin organizing the stakeholders according to relationships. So in this scenario, we cluster the students together, the teachers, and the administrators and coaches. Step eight, circle and label any clusters of similar stakeholders. You don't have to put every stakeholder into a group. It's okay to have outliers and singular stakeholders. And once every stakeholder is grouped, then add a group label. Step nine, connect stakeholders or groups using arrows to indicate relationships. Label arrows with a verb. You can also add arrows to indicate more than one relationship. Once the stakeholder map is completed, take time to step back and examine your work. Also, share with other members of your system. Fresh perspectives may reveal other stakeholders that you missed. Now let's talk about prioritizing stakeholders. Sometimes you may have so many stakeholders that you will have to prioritize engagement you simply will not be able to talk to all of them. In cases like that, a stakeholder matrix can help determine a focus for working with stakeholders. So step one, create a table like this. Step two, label it like this. In the far left column, we have low power and high power, and on the bottom row, we have low interest and high interest. Now, in step three, Work with your teammates to place stakeholders or stakeholder groups in the intersecting categories. You will want to place each stakeholder 
according to their interest and influence over the topic or challenge that you are trying to solve. Here we have added stakeholders to each of the four boxes. However, it's the stakeholders in the high interest column that will be our priority. In cases where you are really short on time and or resources, you may only be able to speak with stakeholders who are both high power and high interest. Nevertheless, keep in mind that high interest stakeholders will always want their voices to be heard, and high power stakeholders may be key to addressing the challenge at hand. After you meet with stakeholders, you might add a thought bubble that represents a stakeholder's primary perspective. However, assigning thoughts or perspectives to a stakeholder on a stakeholder map can be tricky. Make sure to avoid stereotypes or cliches. Now let's talk in-person versus virtual. If you're working in person, you can use sticky notes to create individual stakeholders along with either a whiteboard or several sheets of flip chart paper. Here's an example of an early draft of a stakeholder map. If you're working virtually, you can use Jamboard or Padlet and create stakeholders using virtual sticky notes. However, you may have to get creative when labeling or making connections between stakeholder groups. Here are a few tips and tricks. Do focus on people. Clearly define your system before generating stakeholders and work together to determine stakeholder groups and relationships. Don't list organizations or institutions or use cliches or stereotypes. To review, remember, it is essential to engage stakeholders in the problem solving process. If the solution will impact them, then they should have a voice in the process. And not every stakeholder on a map will necessarily be deeply involved in problem solving. Use the map as a means to listen to stakeholders and to determine who has high interest and who has high power. As always, if you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you.